So we're going to be looking at Nocturnal Gamers versus Psionic Aftermath. <laughs> Both teams have done very well. Uh, Nocturnal Gamers um, actually got eliminated um, in the elimination round, got revived in the round robin round, and has done you know, very middling success. Very uh, good against um, some of the lower caliber teams, not so good against some of the higher caliber teams like Psystorm. Psionic Aftermath, however, hasn't won a single game yet. We'll see if they actually manage to take any games off of Nocturnal Gamers and um, whether or not this is a 4-0 or maybe even Sonic Aftermath can take the uh, take the, the W off this. Either way, we're going to be getting into these games very shortly. Before we do that, I want you guys to meet our amazing casting team of Sluggy and Seeker, the Korean duo. Thank you very much, Shaft. <laughs> the, the Korean duo. I love it. I, I feel like that's a... Uh... Should that be our nickname, Sluggy? Should we call ourselves the, uh... You guys are the yeah, only Koreans allowed in this might event. be a nickname just for us. <laughs> None other like it in the StarCraft community. Oh my god. We are... We're the only Koreans allowed in this league. Er, er, everyone else is banned. But you and me, Sluggy... In fact, we could form our own team. That's how much of a loophole we have right now. That's a possibility, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, as uh, Shaft mentioned beforehand, we, uh, we've we got a big, incredibly amazing finals coming up at 7.30, but we're going to give you guys just a bit of taste of what could be happening. Pre-show loading up on Odyssey. How do you feel about this map, Sluggy? It, I mean, it's a it's a pretty standard map, you know? Nothing, nothing too surprising about it, wouldn't you agree? That's right. Just to talk about Odyssey, it's not nothing that's particularly problematic for any of the races. Now, the most common feature that you could see this on this map compared to other maps is obviously the big wide open spaces. Obviously, this kind of uh, map composition means that uh, compositions that are good at mid game, such as uh, Hydroling Bane, these kind of compositions will excel uh, more so than the other compositions. So that's something to look out for. No, I definitely agree with you. And speaking of Hydraling Bane, it's it's crazy how the the meta has shifted, and nowadays Zerg players are are only doing Hydraling Bane. Like, how often do you see Mutaling Bane anymore? The meta, uh, the so the matchup we have today is Terran versus Zerg, and one of the reasons why Mutaling Bane is not very seen anymore is because the Thor's uh, anti light damage was buffed dramatically. Now, before, if you had few Thors, the Mutalus could handle it somewhat. But now, it would just even two Thors, the Mutalus just go down so fast. So the weak, the strength of Muta in the mid game stage is drastically weakened. Uh, I I agree with you on that front. I mean, Mutas have been weakened. But let us go ahead and introduce these talented players in the top left corner, playing in the Orange Zerg for Psionic Aftermath. It is going to be Psych. Spawn the bottom right is from Nocturnal Gamers, none other than Zenador. All right, Sluggy, uh, one second, please. I am going to go ahead and take a phone call, a very important call, but you go ahead and take it away, Sluggy. <laughs> All right, you got to do what you got to do. So, like I've said, uh, this map... Now, there is one thing that's uh, peculiar about this map, and it is the gold base. Uh, each side gets one gold base, and in Zerg Zer versus Protoss, this is usually not much of uh, a problem, but this can be a particular issue when it comes to Zerg versus Terran. Now, here we see a Reaper, but this is just, of course, if you have four lanes out, you're safe. And with the correct micro, the Sport Crawler morphing, that should be safe. And Zerg has taken particularly no damage. Now, the role that the Reaper has to play now is to check for the third base timing. When, preferably, you want to take your third base at around the three minute mark, right before um, speed is done, which would be 3.30. Uh, that, at that point, the Reaper has no choice but to back up. But it seems that instead, Zenador has taken a rather different approach and took the base over there. Um, this is unusual but the good thing is that if you put your base there then you can spread your creep that way uh towards the left and in so in doing so you can spread the creep and prevent the terrans from dropping in your main base because 
Uh, let's face it, if you split your map to, from side to side, it's going to be much easier for the turn players to swoop in. Uh, and it's going to be later for the creep tumors to spread all the way in. So here comes a, another Reaper, and it should be checking for tech. Is it a Baneling Nest, or is it a Roche Warren? Whew, okay, here, I'm... It, I'm it seems uh... like it doesn't have any interest. Uh, it's just going for the uh, drones, actually. Alright, I'm sorry about that. My, uh... <laughs> My phone ring. Didn't didn't mean to leave you hanging, you know, because you're my co-caster. Uh, I got it. I was just about to run out, but you, you got me. So it's all good. <laughs> just about to run out. <laughs> all right, yeah. well, we've got some links running around, around here in the uh, center part of the map. I'm going to get hair over on the Terran player's territory. It's actually going to see this third command center on the way. Great scouting from the Zerg to be able to see this third command center coming up. <coughs> oh, but he's going to have to run away from these Hellions. He could end up losing all these things if he's not careful. And it looks like Psyche is going to back off for the time being. So it's going to be a Roach attack. And now uh, it seems that the Terran player is... Uh, I thought it was going for a uh, Raven. And when you go with a Helen Hellion Raven, a particular nasty counter is an early Roach attack. Because Ravens are like, you know, that could have been a tank. And tanks and Ravens are so different when it comes to defending. Oh, hold that thought. We have a huge attack coming in here from the Zerg player. And Psyche is just not ready for this. His supply has gone down. And now the Zerg is full range to come inside. Oh, the supply depot doesn't even come up, and now the roaches and links are just going to come in here and destroy everything. The bunkers are not getting put up in time. The stim pack is probably going to be cancelled. This tank is only halfway done out of this factory. Oh, Zyke is in a lot of trouble. It looks like Xenador might just close it off right here in game number one. The GG is called! GG is called, and uh, Nocturnal Gamers take the first game. So one of the most popular strategies that Terrans can be seen doing, including in both ladder and in pro game, is the nasty Raven Hellion Star. Now, when you go with that, you can kind of take a third base, and because you're harassing so much, you're pinning down the Zerg, and you don't you kind of in that sense eliminate the hope of a counterattack. However, as Dark has demonstrated in a match versus Bunny in GSL Super Tournament uh, last month, it the Terran player goes for a Raven and a fast third. A Roach Ravager will just tear that down like straight away. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.